Hello and welcome back to another lesson from the Bible with me, Pastor Doug. Today, we're talking about how God speaks to us. Did you know that God speaks to you? He does in many different ways. But the main way that God speaks to you is through his son, Jesus Christ. Let's take a look at our main point. God speaks to me. Good job. Parents, teachers, don't forget that you can go to faithville.com to download free resources for today's lesson. But of course, the best resource is one that you already have. Invite the Holy Spirit to help you as you lead and disciple your kids. All right, let's get started. Huh? What's this? Universal Remat? What's a universe Aramat? Huh? Well, I don't know, but there sure are a lot of fancy buttons on it, and I love buttons. Wonder what this one does. You got an accent. You ain't the positive. That was weird. Hey, Dusty, are you ready to start today's lesson? Oh, yep, yep. Great, because today we're talking about how God speaks to me. Well, to us. I mean, it's so awesome because God is, well, the creator of the universe. I mean, that's like, that's totally amazing, isn't it? Oh, uh, yep. Hey, wait a minute, did they? It kind of seems like maybe the kids didn't get any of that. Uh, are we recording? Is this working? Yeah, I, I, I think we need to, to start again. Well, let's take it from the top, okay? Okay, whatever you say. Sounds good. Hey there, kids. Today, we're talking about how God speaks to me. Well, to us. You see, because God is the creator of the universe, but he wants to... That's totally amazing, right? I wonder what else this can do. That's really strange, Dusty. It's like I'm talking, but they just can't hear me. It's not getting through. Uh, rewind? Let's see. Fast forward. Rewind. Fast forward. Rewind. Fast forward. Whoa. Did you did you feel that, Dusty? Something is definitely not right here. I, I don't think we can continue with the lesson until we figure this out. Uh, oh, why don't we cut to the craft segment and then we'll solve the problem. Okay. Hi, kids. Have you ever tried to get the attention of everybody in the room before? It can be hard to get that many people to hear you. One time, Jesus had to get 5,000 people to hear him. That's a lot of people. Jesus knew that if he went to teach on a boat, across some still water, or on a mountainside, that that would help his voice to carry to all the people. And on a smaller scale today, we're gonna make our own little amplifiers to help our devices sounds carry across the room. And they're really fun to make, and they don't take any extra electricity to make the sound any louder. So I wanna make another one, but I really wish I had someone to help me. Oh, what, how did you, oh. Where am I? Perfect, Nathan. What are these? These are amplifiers. They look so cool. Thank you. Would you like to help me make one? Sure. Awesome. All right, well, there's a few things we need to get started. We need a template, scissors, and some glue. It also helps to have some paint and some decorations. You can go to faithfill.com if you would like a pre-made template, or you can just make one from this kind of shape here. Should we get started? All right. All right, so I have my template here. Now, Nathan, if you wanna cut that out for me. Very nice, thank you. 
So I am going to fold along all the inside line of this so that we can start to shape it. Nathan, why don't you think about what color you might want to make your amplifier? I think I'm gonna make it green. Awesome. Now that I've started to fold it, I'm going to start to glue it together. Now I'm gonna be using a hot glue gun. Kids, if you are using a hot glue gun, please make sure you have an adult help you. All right, so we have it all glued together now and we're gonna start painting it. Okay, so we are just about done and we decided to make a dragon here. We used some styrofoam balls for the eyes and the nostrils and we've got some little teeth there and the final piece de resistance. Nathan? This is a fire tongue for the dragon. Couldn't be complete without it. And so we can just put it there and we can use some hot glue or tape and looks like a dragon. Awesome, I love it. Should we test it out? I think so. Okay. Okay. It works. Yeah. And that is how you make a acoustic sound amplifier. Okay, everyone, it's time to play Picture Pixel Puzzle. Correctly guess the picture before it comes into focus. Ready? Go! If you said a lake or hillside, you're correct! This is the Sea of Galilee, known today as Lake Kinneret in Israel. A hill like this is where Jesus would have delivered his Sermon on the Mount. The sloped hillside and calm waters would have provided great acoustics for speaking to a large crowd. Thanks for playing Picture Pixel Puzzle! Okay, Dusty, I think we figured it all out. You ready to try again? Okay. I'm ready. Here goes. Hey kids, welcome to today's lesson, where we're talking about how God speaks to us. Which is totally unbelievable and awesome, because God is the one who created the whole universe, and yet he wants to have a personal relationship with each and every one of us. He wants to speak to us, and we can hear him. No, Dusty, this is, something is still wrong here. The kids, are, they're just not. Hey, Dusty, what's that? Oh, uh, this. Uh, this is a Universe Owl Remote. Uh-huh. A what? You know, a Universe Owl Remote. Oh, you, you mean a Universal Remote. Wait a minute, Dusty, that is what you've been playing with this whole time? That's what's been causing this trouble. You're, you're interrupting the signal and playing with the volume. What, have you been putting me on mute? Uh, I don't know. Maybe. Dusty? Dusty, now you listen. You need to give that to me right now. Oh, oh, I like this game. Yeah, yeah. No, no, Dusty, don't you? This is not a game, Dusty. <laughs> Dusty, get back here. Ah! Oh, come get me, dog. You'll <laughs> <laughs> never catch me. Get back here, Dusty. Too quick. Where'd he go? I'm over here. Dusty! Oh, 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 Dusty! Give it! Drop it! Drop it! Oh, you got it all slobbery. <gasps> that was so much fun! Can we play again, Doug? Can we play again? Huh? No, we can't play again. This isn't a game. I was trying to teach the kids the lesson, and they, they couldn't hear me. Oh, yeah, I guess I forgot about the lesson. What were you trying to say again? Well, we were talking about how God speaks to me to us, you know, and hey, the kids couldn't hear me, and Dusty, that's it. It's perfect for the lesson. Oh, it is? Yeah. Y you see, sometimes, just like you turn down the volume on me, we turn down the volume on God, and we can't hear it when he speaks to us. What? 
There's a universal remote for God? No, 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 nothing like that. You see, God is speaking to us always. He speaks to us through his creation, through other people. He speaks to us through the Bible, which is his word. And he definitely speaks to us through his son, Jesus. But... But what? But sometimes, as I said, we're not listening. We uh, turn down the volume on God and listen to other things instead. Oh, yeah. Well, uh, like, like, what do you mean? Mm, this reminds me of a Bible story. Would you like to hear a Bible story? Yay, Bible story time! Our Bible story today is about a man named Elijah. Now, Elijah was a prophet, which meant that he heard messages from God and then delivered those messages to the people. But in this story, Elijah was having a hard time hearing from God. You can find the story in the book of 1 Kings chapter 19. This is a little while after people like Moses and Joshua, but long before the time of Jesus coming to earth as a baby. Let's take a look. Picnic in the wilderness, at that table. Now, in the days of Elijah, there was a king in Israel by the name of Ahab, but Ahab was not a very good or kind king. And he married a queen, Jezebel, who was not a very good or kind queen. Mm. Ah. Filthy peasants. Ah. Let's have some food. Hey, I'm Elijah, the man of God. You should seek God's forgiveness. Queen Jezebel didn't like Elijah. In fact, she didn't like God, and she didn't want the people to serve God. So she was hunting down Elijah to stop him to make him quiet so that he couldn't deliver God's messages. And when Elijah heard that he was being hunted by Queen Jezebel, well, he became afraid and he ran away, very, very far away, for 40 days and 40 nights. After all that running, Elijah came to a place called Mount Horeb, and there he found a cave. Hello? Elijah hid himself in the cave. Anybody? Okay, go oh, hide here. He was not just afraid, he was upset. He hadn't done anything wrong. And, and why was he being treated this way? Poor Elijah. Elijah also wondered why he couldn't hear from God. You see, he had heard from God many different times in many different ways. But now God needed to speak to Elijah in a different way. Sometimes when we're angry or afraid, God might want to speak to us in a very special way as well. Now, as Elijah was in the cave, he went out to the front of it, and God sent a, a great windstorm to, to blow and shake the whole mountain as rocks came tumbling down. But God wasn't in the wind. Then God sent a powerful earthquake, and, and again, the whole mountain quivered and shook, but God wasn't in the earthquake. Then God sent a, a roaring, crackling fire that burned on the mountain, but God wasn't in the fire either. Then there was a silence, and God spoke to Elijah. Oh, you yes. See, God wanted to help Elijah understand that he was still in control, that he could control all of these things. And he wanted to help Elijah, who was feeling afraid. He spoke directly to his heart. Elijah learned from God what he had to do. It was time for him to rest. He would appoint another prophet in his place. And God carried up Elijah into heaven in a chariot of fire. You see, when Elijah was listening to his fear, it was hard for him to hear God's voice. He had to slow down, quiet himself, and remember who God was, how powerful he was, that God was still in control. He had to turn down the volume on his fear 
and turn up the volume on God. And we can do the same thing. God wants to speak to us too. And if we be still and quiet ourselves, we will also hear God's voice, just like Elijah. Let's take a look at our main point together. God speaks to me. Can you say that with me? One, two, three. God speaks to me. Good job. Welcome back, everyone. It's time to play Wacky Workout. Get on your feet and see if you can master this eccentric exercise before the timer runs out. Today's exercise is Crazy Crab Crawls. To do this exercise, lay on the ground and then pick yourself up by raising your legs and putting your arms behind you. Now you're like a crab. Great job. Now for the wacky part, kick those legs high in the air. How high can you kick them? Three, two, one, go. Talk about tricky. Can you do it? 10 seconds left. Now that's challenging. Great job. Thanks for trying crazy crab walks with us. So let me get this straight. God is speaking, but sometimes we're not listening? That's exactly right, Dusty. Thanks for all your help so far. I think I can take it from here. Why don't you go have a seat with one of the kids? Oh, uh, okay. Maybe I can find one of them that will scratch my ears. I love getting my ears scratched. I can never get the right spot by myself. <laughs> okay, now, uh, where were we? Ah, yes, God speaks to us. But there are different things in our life that might make it hard for us to hear God's voice. Let me demonstrate for you. Imagine that um, there's a, a new show on TV and everybody's watching it. It's super cool. But some of the things that that show does or the characters in that show aren't appropriate. Maybe they're doing things that God warns us to stay clear from. But because we watch it and, and we're so invested in it, we start to act like the characters on that show. Well, <laughs> hey. It just got a little harder to hear God's voice. Now let's imagine that some of your friends tease you for going to church or for reading your Bible. And because you don't want to be made fun of, you decide to stop doing those things. Well, it just got a little harder to hear God's voice again. Now let's imagine that life gets really busy. You're doing all sorts of things and you just don't have time for God anymore. You're not praying. You're not spending any time with him. Hey, where'd God's voice go? You see, kids, sometimes we stop listening to God's voice. It's not that he's not talking. It's that we're not listening. Well, we can go to church and we can read our Bible. We can listen to people who might speak God's truth and word into our lives. Ah, that's better. Now we can listen for God's voice again. And speaking of listening to God's voice, it's time to look at our Bible verse. Cue the music. Go get your Bible, go get your Bible, go get your Bible. Okay, Trusty, take it away. Thanks, Doug. Our Bible verse comes from Hebrews chapter 1, verses 1 to 2. Let's look it up together. To find the book of Hebrews, we need to go to the New Testament. 
then we look for the big number one and the little numbers one and two. It says, long ago God spoke many times and in many ways to our ancestors through the prophets. And now in these final days, he has spoken to us through his son. God promised everything to the Son as an inheritance, and through the Son, He created the universe. There was a time when God only spoke to certain people, like the prophets. But when Jesus came, all of that changed. Jesus came to show us the Father, to forgive our sins, and to invite us into God's family. When we listen to Jesus, we are listening to God the Father. And through Jesus, we become children of God, able to hear his voice and follow him. The robots are turning it up. Turn it up, turn it up. The Son of God wants to talk to all of us. Jesus, we're listening. Let all who have ears to hear. Turn it up. Turn it up, turn it up. The Son of God wants to talk to all of us. Jesus, we're listening. everyone to what did we learn today that's right the only game show at the end of this lesson that asks what did we learn today <laughs> our special guest for today is none other than Amelia the Bee welcome back Amelia thanks Doug is this going to take long I was in the middle of a complete carburetor teardown and rebuild. Not long at all. In fact, you have only 30 seconds to answer a question from today's lesson. Are you ready? Ready! All right, Amelia, here goes. What is not a way of listening to God? Is it A, reading your Bible, B, picking your nose, C, Praying or D, going to church? Picking your nose? What? That is the silliest thing I've ever heard. Who writes these questions anyway? This is ridiculous. I want to speak to the producer. Uh, <laughs> uh, he, he's busy. But uh, time's almost up and I don't think you've given an answer. Picking your nose. What, my nose? What, my nose or your nose? No, nobody's knows. <laughs> she says nobody knows. I mean the answer. That's the answer. Pick in your nose. Or B, B. Amelia the B says B. Judges? We have a winner. <laughs> All right. Congratulations, Amelia. Yeah, yeah. 
Hello, everyone. That's all the time we have for today. We'll see you next time on What Did We Learn Today? All right, kids. That brings us to the end of our lesson. I hope you've enjoyed it. But even more, I hope that you know that God wants to speak with you. In fact, He wants to speak with you so much that He sent you His one and only Son, Jesus, who not only shows us what the Father looks like, but also helps us hear the Father as well. So, when you hear Jesus speaking to you, saying that you are loved, that you are His child, that He cares for you, and that He will never leave you or forsake you, you can trust that that is the voice of Jesus. Let's pray to close. Heavenly Father, thank you for sending us your one and only Son, Jesus, who helps us to hear your voice. I pray that we would, all of us, seek to give you more and more of our attention and listen to your words. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, we'll see you next time. Bye. Hey kids, if you'd like to do some of our activity sheets, head on over to faithfield.com slash curriculum.